in his hand to the mic. Matt, this seems like just probably what you come to expect from Zach at this point, the way he's been playing this season, but as consistent as he's been. Yeah, he, um, you know, the most impressed I was the rebound. You know, his ability to go get rebounds, his ability to go get rebounds, you know, in and around people. A lot of times when you get bottled up and you're that size, it, it, it's hard to, you know, kind of have balance and be able to still explode and get the basketball. And he's done a really good job. He, he obviously struggled from the field uh, tonight. He shot under 50%. Uh, but he just stayed with it. You know, he made his free throws. You know, he only had two turnovers. And then he rebounded at a high clip. But no, he's he worked very hard. You know, he's put in a lot of time with the Canadian national team. He's put a lot of individual time here. And um, it's, a, it's a breath of fresh air. Like when you get a guy that, you know, doesn't have bad habits, and his job's a little easier. You know, he, he runs down, he'll set a screen and dive. He'll run down and post. And that's about it, right? We'll run some plays and he's got to know it. But like, um, for the most part, like he, he gets a lot of attention and he's still pretty productive. Coach, you've uh, talked about how the, Purdue, uh, how the team hasn't played perfect offense yet this season. Does, does this performance come close to that, or do you not think so? Well, we gave ourselves a chance. Like, you know, they stayed one-on-one, -on -one and so we didn't go away from our game plan. You know, some people will double. Some people will throw different looks at you. Other teams have had success doing what they did, so that's why they, they do that. They, they're going to live with that. And then, you know, obviously they're going to go back and think they had to play better offensively in the first half because they obviously scored the basketball in the second half, and so did we. But no, he's, um, you know, you got to be able to handle the double teams. You got to understand where people are. So we, we work a lot in not trying to trick him and knowing in certain situations what we're going to do, when we're going to dive, when we're going to cut a guy through, and where guys are supposed to be in their spots. So they can do what they want to do. Like, you can't control that. But they also can't control where we go once it does go inside. And then we just try to play from there. Are you seeing kind of a, kind of a mentality from Zach, the way he's attacking the rim, that he's carrying himself like the great player he's kind of establishing himself as? Yeah, he's just playing with confidence. And I, I think anybody who's been as consistent as he has been so far this season, you know, that's going to build confidence. And it's going to make you want the basketball more. It's going to want you to be aggressive. And the other thing that he's done a great job of is being able to stay out of foul trouble, um, but also be aware defensively. And he probably gets just as many offensive fouls as he does defensive fouls. I think he got one today. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, but you learn. You know, you, you learn how people defend you, and you learn how things go. But no, his stamina is great, and his confidence is at a high level. The second half, of Minnesota's. Offense kind of got rolling. Is that something that you saw wrong with your team, or did they just set a bunch of? Time? Well, I didn't think we we did a good job in staying into the ball a handful of times. I thought Cooper got in there a couple of times, got a dive for a layup, you know, found some people. He got going and made a couple of shots there late. Uh, but I thought they made some tough twos also. You know, I mean, Jamison battles a, it's a really really tough cover. You know, he can shoot to twenty five feet. He can shoot step backs. He can shoot on the move. Um, so so he is a tough cover, but. Um, I thought they made some tough ones. I think we'll go back and watch the film and, and see some breakdowns, but I, but I thought it was more good offense for Minnesota. Um, do you know how long you'll be without Mason and what did not having him mean for your uh, how you distributed your minutes yeah, between Caleb I, and Trey? Yeah, I do not know how long he'll be out. He didn't hurt it in practice. He hurt it lifting. So um, we'll, we'll just wait to see. But, you know, he gives us uh, – Great spark. He's a guy that has a lot of experience. He can shoot the basketball. He's very competitive, you know, and always lays it on the line. But, you know, when you have a, a deep front line like we do, you know, there's going to be nights, there's going to be a guy that might not quite get the minutes. You know, the other night, you know, Caleb and Mason got a majority of those minutes and Trey Kaufman didn't. And um, it kind of shows you, you know, Trey Kaufman's character and those guys' character also. You know, now he's ready to play. So a lot of times when you play six, seven, eight minutes and you think you should play more, you get mad. And then when you get an opportunity, you don't play well. And, you know, Trey Kaufman hung in there and kept a good attitude. And I thought he really helped us tonight when, you know, Mason went down. I thought Caleb did some good things also. How much are you kind of reaping the rewards now of having redshirted Trey where he gives you moments like this and, you know, right. a year ago he's going to play five minutes if he gets into it? Right. 
and, and that's what, you know, the, the college coaches across the country, I feel for them, for the rules, kind of the landscape of college basketball because it's such a microwave kind of thought that, you know, everybody, if you jump into college basketball and you're not good right away, then they, they did a bad job evaluating. They're not very good. Well, it, it takes time when you're 18 or 19 and you're going against 21, 22, 23 year olds. And so we've, we've registered eight out, of, I think eight out of the 12 guys that we've had on our team. And at the end of the day, it's, it's where you're at when you're 22, 23 years old. And you want to have that season or you want to have an all-conference season at the end because that's what he is. He's an all-conference caliber player. And, but it takes a mature person and mature people around you to see the big picture and see what's best for you. Now, with that being said, we have two true freshmen starting for us, right? So if, if that's the case and you're going to be in that position, then everybody understands that. But it's hard for guys to get in their rhythm. It's hard for guys to understand their value when they get yo-yoed in and out of the game. And they're getting yo-yoed in and out of the game just like the subs in high school did for them. So they don't realize when they go out, they'll be like, what did I do wrong? When in reality, whoever that starter is, is going back in the game. So they've never had that mindset. And um, they normally don't talk to the eighth or ninth man in, in high school and say, hey, how'd you guys feel about this? And now they gotta feel it, you know, because you go through it. And that's really hard. So getting that red shirt year and sitting there and seeing a lot of things and not thinking it's personal really allows you to grow and your intellect grows. And then now when you do get a chance, you're gonna be in a much better position. It was kind of that stretch in the first half where you guys made a couple of transition threes there that really kind of flipped the game. Uh, your thought on pushing the ball up the floor for those quick threes, you want them looking for those before Zach is down the floor? and Yeah, if they're open. <laughs> you know, it depends on who it is, right? You know, it depends on, you know, I thought we had some open ones tonight, especially from our fours and fives that were really good shots. Um, you know, Fletch. You know, had some good looks. Brandon Newman can when he catches the ball in rhythm, even though when people are on him, that's a good shot for him. You know, that's that's his baby. You know, he's got to be able to knock that down and make that one dribble pull up. And as long as they're in rhythm, yeah. Fletcher had 20 points, eight assists, no turnovers. Uh, is the game starting to slow down for him from what you see, or was today just more of what you've seen all season? Yeah, no, this is what he's done since he's gotten here. You know, him and Braden are both very confident. Most guys that come in, that's that's where it's hard for them to adjust to major college basketball, just because there's going to be times you're not sure of yourself. You know, he's very Fletcher's very sure of himself. Um, you know, as long as he stays within himself. Like I thought tonight, like I don't think there's one play where you know he got away um, from himself. I think maybe that pass to Zach probably should have passed it out to Ethan, and Zach found a way to get it. Um, but I like it, you know, because they're looking inside, and you see how much we throw the basketball inside. You know, it takes a while to get to that point, and our guys are starting to pick up. If that's the case, you know, you, you got to get it in there, and you're going to get starters out of the game. You're going to get into the bonus. You're shooting from four feet. You know, just there's a lot of positives there. But you know, when you're a player and you're confident, a lot of these guys don't play with a good post guy in high school, so they're not used to feeding the post and. These guys have really started to pick up on that, like make your life easier, get that basketball inside, then we can play off of them, and you're going to get more opportunities from that. But no, he's Fletcher's been great. That's what right. I think he's the third different guy this season to now have seven or more assists in a game, and I don't know how often we've seen that over the years. Does that speak to the collective? Who the, uh, Ethan was another one. Ethan had him. Braden had seven in a game, I Did believe. He? What does that say about your collective well, playmaking? You guys are good at followers. <laughs> <laughs> What they I mean, pay us so to you, do. We've, we've recruited some guys that can pass. You know, you, know you, you go and see Ethan Morton play. You know, in a high school game, you know, he gets eight, nine assists. You know, Fletcher's a great passer. Braden's a fabulous passer. Um, that's you know what you do. Now you, we've really circled a good mix of people around Zach that can pass the ball, but also make plays for themselves. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you.